In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to make use of the Create Job Sheet. Now imagine to yourself that you've just designed a project and now you're going to either go to the machine yourself or send it to a CNC operator. And now most CNCs are controlled by a PC that does not have the design software installed on it. So to remember all the details from the size of the material to the feeds and speeds and to the other toolpaths and their parameters, this is where a job setup sheet really comes in handy. It gives you a visual representation of the vectors that you want to cut and the detail of the material setup and the toolpath summary with all the toolpaths that you're going to run followed by the individual toolpath breakdowns so you can have that to hand when you go to actually run it on your machine. Now these are produced as a standalone HTML file which can be opened offline in any web browser so they can be sent or saved or printed uh, ready to look at before cutting. For this tutorial we're going to look at three different files and each file will yield us a slightly different job sheet. So first of all let's open up an existing file. So let's come up to open an existing file. Now we're going to use this file first, the widgetvector.crv file. We will look at these two examples later, but let's go for this one first. Let's double left mouse click that to bring that into the software. And we're going to pop over to our 3D view when it loads in. And you'll notice there we've got our vectors for our widget. Now if we come to the layers tab here, you'll notice that we have the four layers. We have our cutout, which represents the outside vector, the slots, which represents our slots, the drill holes, and then finally we have the text, so we can turn those on and off. Now let's have a look at some of the toolpathing for this, shall we? So let's go over to the toolpath menu, let's click on this option here, and let's check our material setup first. You'll see our material thickness is 0.375 inches, our XY datum is on the bottom left, Z0 off the material surface, the rapid Z gaps and the Z gap of material are safe and sound for my machine, but do double check these for your machine when making any sort of project. Click OK. And um, you can see we've got multiple toolpaths here uh, dedicated to each one of our vectors. So we've got the pockets, the profile, the drill holes, and the profile for the outside, which is going to cut the whole design out. So let's have a look at these in action. So let's go to the preview toolpath menu, choose our first one, which is our pockets, and we'll just preview that selected toolpath so you can see what our pockets look like. Here's our profile for the text. Here's our drill holes. And then finally, we have our profile cutout so we can cut this out later on so we can remove this from our machine. Now if I just double left mouse click on the material on the outside there, it gets rid of it, so there goes the waste material, and there's our widget ready to toolpath. We've decided that we're happy with these toolpaths and the way they're cutting in our previews, but we're not gonna get around to cutting this maybe today, or even someone else is gonna be cutting this for us. Or maybe we're gonna go be cutting it on a different PC, so maybe we've designed on a PC upstairs, but the lab is downstairs, and we don't have the software on that machine. So what can we do here? Well, what we can actually do is create a setup sheet which will have all the relevant information about this toolpath so we can take it with us to the machine itself or hand it off to someone else if they're the one going to be running the design on the actual uh, machine. And the way we're going to do that is if we close out of our preview, we're going to go up to this tool here called the Create Job Sheet tool. We can also access it through the toolpath menu and click on Create Job Sheet here. Now there's actually two ways you can interact with this tool. You can just simply left mouse click it and then you can create a job sheet and then save it so you can then go and access it later in a Windows File Explorer window. Or what you can do is hold control and then you can left mouse click on the icon. And what that will do is it will automatically open up the HDMI file in our default internet browser once we're done saving it off. And for this time around we're actually going to hold our control key and click on the create job sheet there. So we've got an earlier copy here, I'm just going to overwrite that, click save, click on yes to replace it and you'll notice it opens it up now in my default browser because I held control and left mouse clicked on the tool itself. So at the top of the form we have widget vector. Now that file name is actually pulled from the file name from uh, our project, so the widget vector.crv file. The job layout has our material border as well as the vectors that we have uh, selected, so you've got the uh, nine by nine material border that is the job setup sheet and then we have all the vectors that we had selected on that point let me show you what the uh, software will do in terms of a job setup sheet if I only select a particular layer so let's go back into the software and what we're going to do is we're going to turn off all the layers apart from the cutout layer I'm going to leave that one on and I'm going to save another job setup sheet by holding control and this time I'll call this one profile so we've got a different name for it because it's only the profile toolpath on the outside. And you notice when this one pops up, it's only got the outside profile cut uh, because that is the only layer that I had active. And this is quite useful because 
If you want a job setup sheet to only show particular layers, you can do that. So you can see how that's quite a powerful thing for organization purposes. But let's close out of that for the moment and let's go back into our form. So you can see here we've got the material setup, so the material block and the dimensions of our blocks are the uh, width, height, and the thickness. The home start positions, which is useful for you because if you need to know where your uh, start positions are for your job setup, you can check them here. Your material uh, as your Z0 position, so you've got the top of the material here the XY datum on the bottom left, and then we've got the clearance value, and that again is useful because if you need to remember what your clearance value is, you've got it right here, and all the visuals are taken from the software as well, so all of these you'll notice have been taken from the actual uh, material setup screen in the software. For the toolpath summary, you have the name of the toolpath, the tool that they're using, including the tool number here, and you've got the estimated time that, that toolpath is going to take, and then underneath that, we have the individual toolpaths listed out. So we have the toolpath type, the uh, feed rate, the plunge rate, the spindle speed, the estimated time on the top right there, the symbol for that toolpath. So in the software, you have the logo for that particular toolpath, in this case, the pocket toolpath. So you can recognize it visually by that as well. And then we have the tool name, the tool type, the max de cut depth of that tool, the pass depth, and then we've got the tool number. And this is actually really useful because if you're using an automatic tool change machine, a uh, tool number might be handy to know here. So you've got the tool number reference there as well. And then we've got a step over as well. Now, we're going to go back into the software because I'm going to save out another uh, job sheet just to show you uh, the difference here. So you can see currently our cutout is going to 0.375 as max depth. Now, what if we change that to go deeper? So let's go into our profile cut. Let's change that to 0.475. Let's click on calculate. And the software gives you a warning that you're going to cut through the uh, material all the way. You might go into machine bed, but that's okay in this scenario. And I'm going to close that out, go up to our create job sheet, hold control again, and then we'll overwrite our old profile one, click yes to replace it. And this time you'll notice the max cut depth here it's got for it is highlighted in red because it's obviously showing you visually that you have a cut depth that's cutting through your material all the way through. So it's highlighted that in red to really stand out and show you that you're going to cut all the way through your material. So again, another great handy visual tool when you go down to the machine and you can actually uh, check this. So if you're machining your uh, project yourself, you can have this to hand so you can double check over your tool pass. Or if someone else is going to be machining this for you, you can hand this to them confidently knowing that all the details are there and visually represented in a way that will be very obvious to them. But for now, what we're going to do is go back into the software. We're going to close out this file. We're not going to save it, though, because we don't need to. And we're going to look at another example. So let's go to open an existing file. And this time, we're going to choose the uh, DXF batch layout CRV, which has multiple sheets on it. So let's have a look at this, shall we? So you can see here we've got multiple sheets. So this is actually created in a third party software, exported out as a DXF and then imported into the software where it was set up onto different sheets with nesting. You'll notice here there's no toolpaths here on sheet one as well, just something to make note of. If we come up to our layers tab here, you'll notice we've got several different layers. And if we pop over to our toolpath menu, if we just pin that on as well, you'll notice we've got groups of toolpaths here as well. So if I switch this drop down to all sheets, you can see how they're grouped up in their individual groups and you can just collapse and expand them as needed. And you'll notice again that job sheet one doesn't have any toolpaths uh, associated with it. So I'm just going to select all of these after expanding them by clicking this button here. Now we'll unselect sheet one and then we can have a look at printing this out as a job sheet. And a key thing to note here is if I click on to create a job sheet, what will happen here is if I hold control, it will only open one of them and we want to have a look at all of them. So there's no point in holding down control here. So we'll click on create a job sheet. And you can see we've got our uh, name here for our job sheet. And what's going to happen is when I click save, it's going to amend the end of the file here with underscore sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, etc., all the way up to the number of sheets that we have. So let's go ahead and save that and then we can have a look at these in action. So to do that, let's bring up our file explorer window and you can see here all of the file names have had the sheet name amended to the end of it. So sheet two down to sheet eight and we can double left mouse click sheet two to have a look at what that looks like. 
So at the top here, we've got the job setup sheet. So we've got the DXF batch layout name. We've also got the sheet name referenced here. So the specific sheet in this case with the layout of the job. Then we've got job notes. So in this case, the user had actually set up this job with some notes and they were populated in here. And this is really useful because if you've got specific notes you need to make about this job or to remind yourself of down the road, this is the section in which you can do it. You can see we've got the material setup again down here. We've got the toolpath summary, and then we've got sheet number two at the bottom there, listing the uh, uh, toolpath for the profile cut there. So let's just close down our old forms on this one, and we'll have a look at the next one. So we'll go for sheet three. So again, you'll notice at the top here, we've got the file name, the sheet name specifically, the layout for sheet three specifically, the job notes, and then the material setup. But then we've got the toolpath summary here, which has a lot more toolpaths, you'll notice. So it's respected the fact that tool uh, or sheet number three had far more toolpaths associated to it. They're reflected down here. And along down here, you can see all the individual toolpaths that have been respected as well. So let's close that down and we can look at how you can actually edit notes within the software. So to do that, we go up to edit notes and you can put your notes in here to whatever you need them to be for this particular job. So they'll show up on your job setup sheet. But with that, Let's go close this file and we'll look at our final example. Don't need to save the changes this one. We'll go to open an existing file and we're going to choose this file here, the introduction into two-sided machining. And we're just going to flip the view so we're back on top. So if we pop over to the 3D view, let's have a look at the file in question. So you can see here I've got multiple layers for the top side and I know I'm on the top side uh, because I have the option here to flip between the top and bottom sides. I've also got the view control here as well. So if I flip to bottom sides, you'll notice that the ruler color around the 2D view here changes. And in the 3D view, we can actually see the front side because we've got this option here to toggle between single sided and double sided view. So we can turn that on and off if you want to see the vectors in a lighter color in the background there to represent the uh, front side or the back side, depending on which side of the job you're on. And if we go over to our toolpath menu, we can pin that down you'll see that we've got an indication that we're on the top side here. And if I flip over to the bottom side, we have an indication that I'm on the bottom side. So you can see the top and bottom have separate toolpaths for each. Now in this case, what you need to do for the create job setup sheet is you need to save a setup sheet for each side. So if I hold control and click onto this one to save it, and I'll click save and we can open this up. You'll notice at the top here, we've got the job setup sheet. We've got the name of the file. We've got the job layout here as well. And then we've got the material setup. So we've got this time two extra parts. We've got the job type, which is double sided. And it says the side of material. It tells us it's the top side. And it also tells us the material flip direction, which is horizontal in this case. So we know which way to flip our job on the machine when we come to do it. Again, we have all the other information about material setup as before, the toolpath summary, and our toolpath listed. And you can see here, we've got one toolpath that's cutting all the way through because it's highlighted in red. So let's just close that out. And I can do the same for the bottom side. So if I flip over to the bottom side, I can click save on this for our create job setup sheet. And you'll notice that if I just move this across, you'll notice that the first one was called top because it's respected the fact that it was a top sided or the top part of a two sided job. So when I save this one, if I open my uh, file explorer again, you'll notice that this time it says for the bottom side that there is the bottom bit on the end of the file as well. Now let's just take a moment to talk about what you can do with your job setup sheet once you've exported it. Now currently it's a HTML document, which means it will open up into my default internet browser. And in this case, it's Google Chrome. So that's what I'm using here. And to access my print options, I just need to right mouse click and I can choose print. Now this may be different depending on your particular internet browser. You may need to click around the options, but for Google Chrome, in this case, it's right mouse click and print, and you may find it's the same for your particular browser. So let's click on that and let's have a look at the print options for our worksheet. So the top right here, you can see I can save as PDF or I can change the destination to be my particular printer. And you can save it as a PDF if you want to distribute it in a different way. So that's an option for you as well. And if you come down here to more settings, you'll find that these will be the same for the PDF or for your destination printer as well. Now, while we're down in the bottom of the form here, we can look at these options here for margins and headers and footers. You'll notice if I change my margin to minimum, it actually gets rid of my headers and footers. And if I put that back to uh, default, you'll notice that my header and footer appear again. So that's the file location, the name of the file, and the date and time it was created. 
Now, if you want to hide this for whatever reason, because let's say you're giving this job set out sheet uh, externally and you don't want the people to see those locations or those details, you can just turn off the headers and footers. And if it's not showing up correctly, you could also have a look at your background graphics and turn them on because there may be an issue with rendering. So you can always check that option to assist with that. But for now, I'm just going to cancel out of this. Now, when we're back in the software, there's actually a way for you to customize your job sheets within the software. And we're going to do that. So we're going to go up to gadgets and we're going to click on the uh, setup sheet editor. Now, you'll see it brings up this menu here. And this allows us to have different options on ways that we can edit our job setup sheet. So first up, you can see we have the change logo option here. So this is where the Vetric logo is in the top right here of the job setup sheet. So if you want to use your own logo, then you can do that. But keep in mind that these are the dimensions it will be scaled to. So if you have a rectangular image, it will be kind of squished or reduced down to scale that uh, value there. So 250 by 52. You can also change the name here if you want to, to call it something else. You can change that to your company name, for example. You can change the colors here. So you can change the colors using this grid here. And you can also change the border color here for uh, the border. So you can change the text and border colors. You can add or remove setup sheet information. So let's say you don't want the job notes anymore. You can just get rid of that section entirely. Or if you don't want the job layout vectors, you can get rid of that. And then you can click OK to apply the changes. And it's a good idea to restart the software if you've done this so you can be confident that when you come to set up your next job and your job setup sheet, all your changes will be applied here. And then finally, we have the option here to restore. So you can restore all of your default settings if you need to in case you made a mistake. But with that, I'm just going to click Cancel. And that brings us to the end of our tutorial on how to use the job setup sheet. I hope you found this useful and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.